hello happy Thursday thank you for joining me here tonight we are going to do some more free motion quilting so this is our block from last night uh, here's the back and we did all of these little pebbles uh, some stitching on there so that is the plan for tonight we have two more of these to do this is for the splendid sampler to quilt along and we are doing the quilt as you go process for that so thanks for joining me again here tonight uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from penguin and fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter and I am here every weeknight at 8 30 p.m. central time and it's a time that we can relax and craft together uh, I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way and just come and chit chat and hang out. So thanks again, everyone. We are working on the splendid sampler to quilt along. Uh, we are doing this as a quilt as you go process. And what that means is that we are basically just how it says, we are quilting smaller parts of the quilt before the whole entire quilt is done. Usually you make the whole entire front of the quilt, then you put some batting down and the whole entire back, and then you quilt, you sew all the three layers together. Uh, what we're doing instead is taking smaller batches. So this is just four of the blocks from the hundred blocks that will be in this quilt. And we have put some batting in between there and we've put a back on and we are quilting this just like we're in the middle of making the quilt and we're quilting it already. Uh, and we will actually take all of these blocks later and assemble them into a larger quilt. So this is the idea of the quilt as you go process. You're quilting it beforehand uh, and assembling it later. And there are a couple of uh, fun techniques for that. So we did this one last night, uh, that quilting last night, and we have two more to do. So we have uh, these four segments, it's already sandwiched together. It's already in the quilt, ready to go. And then we have uh, this one as well. I think we're going to do this one tonight just because we have some ideas with like tripping ice cream or, or something would be kind of fun. Uh, so hopefully you guys can help me with other ideas to quilt, um, to quilt this guy here. Uh, so let's get started. I'm super excited to do more quilting, more machine quilting. It's so fun. Okay, here again is our setup. I have my extension table on my vintage, I, I don't know, what do you call 70s vintage? I suppose. I suppose it's uh, vintage as far as sewing machines go. So this is my Sears Kenmore uh, 70s sewing machine. And uh, here is... Our, our pieces here. All right, again, this is the one that we did last night. We did all of these little circles. We traced around the octopus, added some little elephant uh, water coming out of, out of his nose there, out of his trunk. And uh, you can see it a little bit better on the back. We filled the whole entire thing with like these little bubbles. It's called pebbles in quilting, but we're doing an underwater theme for this one. So there are bubbles uh, in my head and we have like a little bit of water up on top here. I thought this kind of looked like the sun on the back too. So we're warming up, we're warming up the bubbles, some sea kelp. Anyway, that was fun. This was a good warm up, warm up I think yesterday, uh, just practicing those circles. So that was fun, that was last night. And now we have these two left. So we have this guy here and also this one has a cute little ice cream cone and heart here and then the horse deal i think for for these i would like to just trace all the embroidery uh maybe we just trace the word so i don't know we should we should make this cute somehow like we could put like little we could actually just flesh this out. We could draw like an ice cream cone on top of this that's dripping a little bit. And we could even do the crisscrosses in, in, uh, um, oh, we could try, we could do some ruler work. We could try doing some crisscrosses with a ruler on the machine. That'd be kind of fun. And then just kind of outline it and see what we got there. I'm not sure what to do with the horse yet. Let's, let's outline him. 
Uh, maybe we'll start with this ice cream cone, just because we have a little bit of an idea. You know, ideally I'd start from the middle here, but I think I'm going to just start drawing an ice cream cone on top of up on top of here. So let's get going with that. Uh, thanks for uh, watching again, everyone. Oh no, Charlotte says I graduated from high school in 1973. I guess I'm vintage. <laughs> well, this is my mom's sewing machine from from college. I've been trying to take care of it, although it's not completely 100% functioning right now. It is functioning enough that we can do some free motion quilting on it, though, so that's that's positive. All right, I think I think here's my plan. I'm gonna start with the ice cream cone, but I'm gonna make it like those ice cream cones with the little, little like uh, fluff at the bottom, and then we'll draw. We'll just draw our shape on top of this. I don't know why. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, all the little bloops, and then then we'll come back and do some ruler work here. Like maybe we could extend this down to a point and do some crisscrossing. I think that'd be good. So we'll start here because then we can end up there with the. Out, being able to outline it. All right, I, th I think that's a good plan. And this is sort of centralized. All right, ooh, give him a mane. We could, well, he kind of does have a mane. So look, we have a 3D mane to him already. So we can puff this up. Uh, and this will this will puff up anyway once we start washing it. So he already has the, the mane. Oh, I lost my little thread underneath. Oh, that doesn't matter. I have to actually get my thread to the top. So I'm going to just back stitch for a sec here and that will oh geez uh it will bring the th the bottom thread the bobbin up to the top if i just pull there we go so now i just need to grab a scissors or my stiletto here and grab that bottom thread there now we have both threads at the top now the bottom won't tangle all up underneath okay let's see Let's start right here. And I, I wanna do, like I said, like one of those fluffy ice cream cones, even though that's not what this looks like. Uh, but I think that'll be kind of fun. Let's, let's start the fluff a little bit. Well, let's start it right here. All right, my foot's down, make sure it's tight. Sometimes this loosens a little bit. All right. It's going to be a question mark how long our bobbin lasts. So I don't know. It may or may not be today. We'll see. Oh, Angela says she has the same machine. Oh, for fun. She bought it with her first paycheck from her teaching job. Ah, oh, how cool. That's awesome. All right. We're adding a little ice cream bloopity bloops. Ooh, let's add... A uh, let's add a drip within within the ice cream because I want to focus on um, I want to focus on ruler work. All right, so I'm gonna make like a poofy outside bit, like those fun um, ice cream illustrations, and then we'll go around the top here. We'll we'll even arc it. I think that'll be good. Ooh, all right. So here's a little situation. This is so thick. Uh, this has uh, my strawberry is applique on top of there, and it has uh, embroidery and other stuff. Ooh, I'm gonna have to really force it to get around. Okay, I want to trace around that. Now that I'm on top of it, it, it seems fine, but ooh, it did not want to go there. Let's draw the little stem too. That's kind of cute. All right, I'm gonna go around again just to get get over here. All right, and then now we're going to come down the arc on the other side. But while I'm here, let's snip away those little threadies. All right. So see, I, you can kind of see that cute little ice cream cone shape. Let's let's come down the Oh, let's do the drip too. Um let's let's have it just drip right here. How about that? We'll go down a little bit and then we'll just do like a little trippy drip from the top there that works let's let's keep it like that all right let's finish this arc going down the side and now let's add more of those fun bloopity bloops 
So the more putts in the round <laughs> we do on this, which I have the feeling is what we're gonna, what the game is gonna be tonight, just because uh, the ideas we have so far, there's a lot kind of going on. Uh, the the slower it's gonna be, so we might be working on this one for a couple nights. All right, I'm back around to the side here, and ooh, what's that? Watch, watch your bobbin is supported by it. Mind Viking. Oh. Oh, sorry, you guys are having a conversation about the about the bobbin, yeah. All right, we're going to do some ruler work now. So I am using a westerly, uh, a westerly foot. Uh, westerly is the brand name. So this is a special foot for several reasons, but for tonight, why it's special is, first of all, uh, it is a perfect circle, so it is, the needle is exactly in the center, so it's a quarter of an inch away, all the way around. So I always know wherever, if I, if I use, if I'm on the edge of it, I'm always going to be a quarter inch away from the needle. That's going to be important. The other thing is that it is a ruler foot. And when something says it's a ruler foot, what it, what it means is that it's kind of fat. So this is about, it's about a quarter of an inch fat too, or like, I don't know, four millimeters or something. And what that does is it allows me to get a ruler right up next to it here. And these grippets, these are, uh, they're by sewingmates.com. Uh, but the grippets, I'm, I'm clearly using them to quilt with, but what's nice, you know, they, they grip to, with a little pad to whatever you're working on. But what's also nice is that it has these straight lines uh, and arcs that you can use as rulers. Uh, for mine, <laughs> since since my machine gets so low, uh, I actually don't have like the, it has like little nubbins on the top that help quilt. Uh, I have a set where those are actually cut off, so I can get get the ruler in here really well. But if I put the straight edge here and I kind of estimate it so it's a quarter of an inch away, and if I follow it with the edge of my um, foot here. I should be able to get a nice straight line, and I think I'm going to go all the way down so I get to the point. So my, my sewing is always going to be a quarter inch away from the ruler, so that's going to be like the little test of, you know, how, how well we know our quarter of an inch, but ooh, I'm a little worried I'm going to hit, ooh, I am. So I'm going to hit my edge a little bit here. I wonder if I should try with a shorter, let's try with, um, just a plain ruler here. My my mechanics on my machine are just a little. They're, it's not. It's a little different than newer machines. So this is just a skinnier, a skinnier ruler, and I think I'll be able to clear this little seam back here. So uh, it doesn't have all the nice grips that my my grip it does, but I still actually need this to move. Okay, let's. We're gonna do the shorter guy here. Oh, let's go! I'm kind of nervous. I need to get my hand up here to help move yet. So we should be able to get some pretty good straight lines. I'm trying to go on the edge, but I can see that my quarter inch is already a little crazy. But all right, I think about there. And decently straight. <laughs> Let's try going back up the other way. And actually, that's not going to fit in there, but we can... I think we can still do the ruler this way. Ooh, I'm I'm a ways from a quarter of an inch. I think I have to go a little bit further down here. I think I got a couple more stitches in me. All right, let's let's try that. All right, now I'm looking closer to a quarter of an inch up this way. I'm doing this outline first, and then we can go back and add uh, little details if we want. I think. Ooh, this is good practice, though. I have not done this in a while. Ooh, we skipped a few stitches down here. Um, that's just probably from me jerking it too fast. Mm, a few here, too. So uh, uh, luckily, we'll be going over these shapes again, because I do want to continue to practice, uh, practice like just the back and forth of this a little bit, I think. Um, all right, let's see. I want to add some crisscrosses in here. Let's just start. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm gonna use 
think I still need to use this ruler here. Let's follow the lines of, we're not gonna go totally like 45 degrees. Let's follow the lines of this fabric. I think we did a pretty good job at placing that fabric. It'd be nice to go right on that line. So let's give that a go. Ooh, gripping all this is a little difficult. Maybe I can grip, oh, look at that. I can use the grip it right on my ruler. Okay, but then this one will have to take care of moving the fabric. Let's see how we do. Now I gotta move this down. So we're, we're kind of jerky a little bit again tonight. Um, I'm sure that's a lot based on, you know, my skills or lack of, but it's also, I think the humidity is really making things stick. All right, so I'm gonna just go down, let's go down to about here. We're gonna make these kind of big just because this ruler work is a little tough. Let's go down to there. Let's just go there, let's say, and now we'll crawl back up the other side. Now, if you're really super good, you can start doing uh, straight lines and stuff without all this ruler work. But look, I mean, that's a pretty decently straight line, uh, probably a bit better than I would normally be able to do. Um, all right, let's, let's, let's crawl up this side too. That'd be fun, okay. So we kind of ended up where we did on that side. Let's, let's go up this direction. So we're kind of making like a little crisscrossy pattern. It's cute, it's cute, cute, cute. All right, so, <laughs> you know, I, I really need a line right there. I'm sure there's a easier way to think this through. Uh, I think let's, if I go down to here, I could just go up and down in one movement. That would be great if I could do that. So I'm gonna go right to here. All right, I think right there. Oop, I guess right there. Now I'm gonna go up and down and then we'll get right in the center here. Ooh, that's gonna work out great. Oh, it's like a little waffle cone. <laughs> it's so cute. So cute. All right, now down this side. I mean, clearly, uh, Ruler work is a skill. <laughs> it's a skill that needs to be practiced if you want to get good at it. Oh, it's so adorable. Uh, so keep at it. <laughs> Don't get discouraged. I mean, I have tons and tons of work to do on it as well. So it's kind of fun. These little, it's kind of fun where you're not doing a whole quilt where you can just practice on these little moments. That actually makes it way easier to, to like experiment and try. All right, I need to get to like about here because I need to get, I need to get this line that we kind of missed. Let's, okay, let's, let's figure out our path here. So I could go down here. I kind of don't have any stitching here, which worries me, but we'll have enough quilting in other places. So let's, or I could actually go down and come back up. Let's do that. Then I'll make sure to get these little areas that my stitching has kind of come out. So I'm gonna go down and then come back up to here and then we'll finish off our little, our little guy here. Um, all right, and then after that, I think I will just do a little jump and we'll do that echoing of this shape. I might actually jump all the way up here. Um, so we'll have to snip some things when we're done. But then I'll, I'll do that echoing shape. So we're gonna come, come down a little bit into our horse, but I think that's fine. And then we can decide, the echoing is just making a little outline on the outside of it, which is so easy to do, in, you know, easy, uh, once you practice a bit with this circular foot, because we're always, we can always um, be a quarter inch away, so that's helpful. Uh, but then we'll decide where to go from there. <laughs> this is the only idea I have so far. So <laughs> we're, we're going to start here. All right, again, I'm getting my ruler lined up. 
and I'm going to try and go all the way down here first. Oh, the ruler is so helpful. I wouldn't be able to do this without of it, without it for sure. Okay, let's go right back up. Uh-oh. Well, that may be... Am I even stitching? I might be out of bobbin here now. Let's, I'm going to just go up to there where I would stop anyway, just in case I do have bobbin here. But I think, I think we're, I think we're out of luck here. Oh no, it's still stitching. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. I'm going to just snip that away. So this is a little, did it skip again or is this from before? Well, it did look like I have, that must have been from before because I do have a pile of stitches there. So, oh, I don't know. I guess we're fine. All right. So I'm going to actually stop and we are going to, I'm going to jump up just because I don't want to start a line in the middle, like a straight line in the middle. I'm going to jump up here. Woo, sorry. Dropped my grippets on the floor. I need like a... I need like a webbing or something, a, a net around me for all, all my things that I drop. Okay, so I'm gonna go around my whole piece now, but look how cute that turned out. So you can see I am, I am uh, putting the edge of my foot right along the edge here, and I'm gonna just try and hug my shape the whole entire way around. So let's just kinda get some stitches to start this next area. I will snip this one when we're done. And now since this is still a straight line, I'm going to have to get this guy in here to help me out. So I'm just trying to keep visually the distance between there. The stitching will happen right in the middle of this shape. Oh my gosh, I almost dropped it again. Crazy. Okay, let's do it. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna adjust a little bit. I'm getting a little off. Okay, and about there. And I think that's where we need to rotate back up. Let's see where we're at. Okay, I'm, I'm aligning my ruler uh, with, I'm hitting the edge here and I'm just like exactly with with my outline, so I should be able to go right up here. Ooh. Okay, and I should be reaching my little bloops about there. All right, I've seen worse of my work. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how straight these are. My stitches are still pretty jagged, and I think that's just from me I don't know, I'm not moving very smoothly, so that's something I'm gonna pay attention to. Pay attention to it tonight. Oh nope, Sue, it's still there. <laughs> Sue's like my string, my string bracelet is gone, but it's still hanging out here. Alright, let's do these bloops around. So now we're done with our straight lines. I think that'll probably be it for my straight lining tonight, but it's looking, I'm, I'm really happy with the little stitching we have in the middle. I suspect this is going to be really cute on the back. Uh, let, let's see. So let's, I'm going to try and get my bloops here. Again, I'm just trying to hug, hug my shape as best I can. Uh, the, the idea is we're making this extra outline and then we'll fill in all this space, but it'll still, sh it'll still, um, we'll still be able to, like our ice cream cone won't get hidden in the mess because um, we're doing this extra outline to it. But I have no ideas after this, so I'm gonna need them quick. All right, we're back at the beginning. So if I just rotate this so you guys can see. There is our shape so far. It's looking, stitching was looking decent on the back. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't a huge mess. Oh, it's cute though. Look at this little, this little crisscrossy in there and these little extra bloops. Oh, it's so ice cream coney. Okay, now what? 
<laughs> uh, so, I'm not sure what to do next. In theory, we could do some swirls coming out of here. I mean, swirls. I could practice my little swirly, like those little snail-looking swirls. I am those freak. Like I'm, I'm scared to do those because I just, I have a hard time getting in and out of spots. But that, this might be an opportunity to, to kind of try that. Just like get, get some bloops going. Um, Ooh, even I could just do swirls and, yeah, get myself out of them. That would kind of be, like, swirl ice cream or something. Uh, we could do that. Uh, Jen is saying, uh, keep going, another layer or two. I could go around again. That would give us, like, a double border. That's not that's not a horrible idea. That'd be kind of fun. Let's just do it. <laughs> it's an excuse to use, uh, use the ruler again. Let's just make another giant layer here and then then I think we'll do those swirls because that that's kind of ice creamy to me let's let's go with that all right I'm gonna take this pin out that's down here Sue says swirls will work Angela says swirls okay let's do one more outline it'll give us a little bit more practice with the ruler and why not we're here I am really trying to work on Oh gosh, I'm getting way off. Let's let's change a little bit. Um, but I am trying to move smoothly. I'm sure it's more user error than the machine's fault. So, uh, it's practice. I'm sure. Okay, I'm aligning the ruler. I went a little far, but that's okay. We're just gonna deal. We're gonna just do whatever straight line this ends up being. I think I'm off, way off. Okay, there we are. <laughs> Not too shabby. It's kind of fun. I think it's kind of silly. All right, let's go around and then we'll just swirl the heck out of this thing. I think we could probably get the swirls into here just fine. Maybe we'll outline the heart and then like do swirls everywhere else. Um, then we'll work our way down because I do want to kind of trace this sewing, trace this embroidery. And then, then I don't know. I mean, I guess swirls kind of work in the sky here. It's like kind of like a starry night then if we do swirls and then just trace that. I mean, why don't we just do that? Let's trace everything, every motif here and then do swirls around it. That's That seems like a decent plan. I like it. Maybe we even like double outline everything. That could be a thing, right? Swirl around it. I'm wondering if we should stop and start and do the double outlines of everything first and then swirl. You know what? I haven't ever really done that. Let's let's give that a try. Let's let's just do some starting and stopping uh, more so than I usually do. So let's take this off the machine. We will trace everything twice and do swirls everywhere else. I think that is that is the game plan here. So let's just take a peek. There's our ice cream cone. Oh, it's so cute. Just snipping all the snips right away. All these little jumps. We'll have to snip on the other ones as well. Okay, let's peek at the back. <laughs> I like the little swirlies. It's so cute. Let's cut all these little extras. Little ice cream cone. I suspect that's how a lot of people do large quilts too. They get all their main motifs in and then they come back and swirl all around. I, I think maybe it's not done all at once. Ooh, I like the little drip. That looks cute. Ugh. But look, so this is the ruler work. I think that turned out really pretty. Um, yeah, and this double outline, I mean, it looks like a lot right now, but I think once we have all the swirls, it'll really highlight um, the inside there. Oh, it's cute. Okay, let's do the little heart. Let's go around there twice. 
and then we'll cut it off and then let's go around these shapes twice. That should extend out quite a bit. Then let's do this horse twice and then let's just pick a spot and start some swirls. That'll be good. It'll, it'll be good with these motifs in beforehand. That'll, I think, help me, help me a little bit with my practice. Then all I have to do is avoid, avoid motifs versus trying to figure out how to do the motifs and swirls at the same time. So maybe this is good, good practice for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go right on the edge of this heart. Oh, I did not bring up the bottom thread. That's fine, we're gonna just do it without. Uh, what I have to pay attention to though, because I didn't bring up the bottom thread, the bobbin, uh, is that it doesn't become super tangled. So I do, I'm kind of gripping on it over here. Let's, or I'm just gonna try and keep it out of my way. Maybe once I get over here, I'll try and eh, lift it up to snip it away, but I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Every time it's making that loud noise is because I'm getting into the applique. There's a lot of stabilizer stuff underneath that applique. So it's thicker. So I'm just trying to stay right on the edge. Ooh, this is good practice. Good, good practice. I am, I'm feeling good about that. I was really close to that, that edge there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just jump up. We're gonna just jump that quarter inch away. Let's get some more stitches in there. I'll, I'll cut that off later and let's go around. Uh, this will be our first echo. And then we'll go around one more time. And I'll just have to snip all these crazy threads on the back. Fun. So now I'm watching the edge of my foot and trying to get that edge of the foot touching uh, touching the edge of what I already did here. <laughs> this is somewhat a challenge for me. By somewhat, I mean a challenge for me. <laughs> somewhat should not have been in that phrase. All right, let's just kind of move these threads away. I am gonna snip that top one since I can see it. Get that out of the way at least. I still have that bottom one, which might cause trouble, but hopefully not too much. Ooh, was holding my breath a little bit there. <laughs> All right, now let's jump up again. This is gonna be that second echo, like what we did on the the, the um, ice cream cone. We did that second echo as well. Breathing. to work on as far as stitch length and everything goes, but I think that's just going to be actively practicing that. And and I think we're doing just fine right now. There, two little echoes, a little wobbly wobble in there, but oh well. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take it off the machine again. And we're gonna just jump down to the next piece. So again, in theory, I could do all the swirls and connect these and then do this all at once, but we're giving we're giving this route a try. Let's let's snip these guys while we're here. Snipping all of the little connectors. I think a lot of the ideas with um, free motion quilting is how can you connect everything so you don't have to do like these jumps and leaps, but at the same time, there's nothing wrong with doing it like this either. Whatever gets you to the end result you want, I think. I mean, honestly, we could probably get away with not doing any quilting on the rest of this at all, because this is probably enough. I mean, ultimately the batting or the, the idea is you need enough uh, quilting to hold all your batting to the back and the front. Like you need to hold all your pieces together. But modern batting, 
uh, it does allow for having quite a bit of distance, or certain types of batting you can have, like, you know, even up to, like, eight inches not quilted. So technically, we could probably just leave it with just these outlines of everything and be fine. But I am here to practice practice my quilting. I think we're going to do this upside down just because it'll be easier on the machine. Um, ooh, get in there. And we can start more towards the middle than two, maybe. Let's see, maybe I do the, the, the sew text first. I wouldn't be able to get two things in here, really. We can get like one echo. And then we could just like get a bottom echo. Eh, or not. Maybe maybe I would get to this edge and then I can start. We can do maybe an inner echo on all the shapes and then get on the outside and do an outer echo. Uh, but then I'm not tracing the shapes. I wonder if I want to trace everything. Well, I traced the other ones, didn't I? So maybe I should trace like really close to the text, really close to everything. Oh, that's a lot of jumping around. I think I'm going to just do an echo of this. I can always go back in and do the little flowers and stuff. Like it would be kind of cute to go around the flower. I think I can do that. I think that it's gonna almost, it'll almost look like that anyway. Let's let's just start with the echo. So, all right, this time, let's get my bottom thread to the top. So let's go backwards here. I think this needs to be down. There we go, there's our bobbin thread. Just need to snag it, there we go. Now it won't get all jumbled up underneath. That's that's the idea of having both threads on the top. Yeah, we could just do, I mean, we really could just do like a circle on the inside and then the bloops on the outside. That might be, I mean, that might be an idea. First of all, before we get too far, I'm gonna just uh, take this out because he's gonna get in our way real quick. Freehand, a flower above and below. So, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, Teresa, I like that because then, um, then I can do, then I can just keep this echo on the inside and outside and the echo is here, but I'll still imply a flower. So, okay, I'm going to go, let's see, how would I do that? I'd go around and then maybe here I'd just go around and do my bloop. Maybe I'll add the flower once I do the inside bloops. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just echo around the so That'll get me back to here. Then I'm going to echo around the inside of this border. And when I get to here, I'll add a little flower. And then I'll continue to echo. And then here, I'll add another flower. And then I'll get back to here eventually. And then I can jump to the outside. Okay, there we go. That's our plan. I got it. <laughs> All right, here's our first few stitches just to... Get that set. Jeez, dropping stuff again. Holy cow. Whew, I'm excited. Here we go. So I'm really kind of hugging this. I'm not going to go all the way inside. We're just going to stay on the outside of this S. Okay, I'm going to try and go really smoothly because it is kind of jerking around a little and I want to do my best to avoid that. I'm going to add little bloops of this W. What's nice is that uh, the distance between here and then here and here, th that's like a half inch almost. So our outline should be right in the center. Oh, let's, since we're here, let's cut these off. Our little threads. Oh, this is going to be cute. Oh, I'm so happy uh, with what we did yesterday. That that really did feel like a warm up for me again. And I don't think I would have been able to do all this echoing and straight line stuff without that out without that um uh, warm up. All right. So since this is kind of touching, these two outlines will touch. I'm just gonna start the outline of this now. 
we're gonna just go around all these flower or these leafy loops. Ooh, we got that. Uh, we got that French knot in the way. How do we? How do we address that? I guess we just bloop around it. Let's bloop around it. That seemed to work. All right, so I'm gonna get up to here, and then we'll add like an itty bitty flower. It's gonna be pretty small uh, because these echo lines are um, kind of big. But I do like the idea of an extra little flower. All right, so right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and add like a five blooped flower. All right, one, two, three, four, five. And then kind of back to where it began. Ah, oh, that works. I think that works. All right, so now I'm gonna continue tracing. Again, I'm trying to keep that outer edge of my foot along the edge of my stitching, my embroidery. Ooh, am I folding over the top here? No, okay. All right, and then when I get down to here, I'll add another flower, but look how cute. I think that was, that was a nice, that was a sweet idea. All right, let's, let's do it again. Okay, that's half of one, two, three, four. Oh, that's, yeah, and then five, and then that second half of one. Goes back to the beginning. Oh, it's cute. Oh, we could really just fill the whole outside with little flowers like that too. I'm bad at connecting things though. I'd have to connect it to the next flower somehow. All right, we're, we're just about back. There we go, we're back to the beginning. All right, now I'm gonna do my jump to the outside, like how we did the other thing. So I'm gonna just go out. Ooh. There we go. Bob didn't wanna go quite yet. All right, we'll just, we'll start it right here. So that's our jump that we're gonna cut later. Get rid of the pin. All right, let's outline this twice. Let's do our double echo. But I think that turned out really kind of cute. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna get rid of this pin. You're gonna be in my way. All right, let's do it. And it it is helpful that we flipped it upside down because then I'm not dealing with bulk in my machine here or anything. All right. Oh, thanks, Teresa. That's funny, Teresa. So Teresa on Facebook just said, my shoulders would be tense. You look at, e so at ease, you are doing great. So literally before I looked up to read your comment, I was thinking, oh man, I got to relax. My shoulder's getting tight. <laughs> so that's funny that you said that right then. It's a good reminder. So I'm, I'm just moving my neck back and forth a little bit here, doing a little stretch, thinking about that shoulder, keeping that relaxed. Let's get to it. And breathe again. I'm holding my breath again. So all of those things. You wouldn't think it'd be like such a physical thing like that you would have to actually mentally remind yourself, hey, remember to breathe. Remember to not have your shoulders so tense. It's kind of crazy. I wasn't really expecting all that when I started free motion quilting. I bet you like the people that do this really, really well and all the time it's got to be like a sort of yoga where they they have thought through you know like they you know, they've had their moment of being calm and having to teach themselves to be calm and now i bet you it just comes super naturally just to super chill just chill and so away and, or maybe they just have their stretching routine down i don't know but they got to be doing something because this would uh, pretty quickly, I think, be a lot on the body. Oh, I'm, I feel like I'm getting better at um, staying close to this edge here. I, I, I feel like my outline here is like looking awesome. I'm pretty stoked with it. I wonder if I should get in here a little bit more. Let's, let's go in a little bit further. Yeah, change my mind. 
All right, we are back to the beginning. Let's do our second. This is actually kind of like our outline. We'll do we'll do our at least one bloop on here. Yeah, this is kind of like our outline. We almost need the two bloops, don't we? Yeah, we need two. So this will be the first one. I think we're going to run off the edge, which is just fine. All right, so I'm jumping out. So this is like our outline, like what we did with the heart here. So we need the two bloops. That'll be fun. I mean, all these bloops are really filling in the space quite a bit, so that, that makes me happy. It's, it's, it's easy. I don't have to worry about getting in and out of swirls and loops and stuff, so <laughs> it's a little bit easier for me since I find that to be quite challenging. I'm sure other quiltos would be like, well, you just swirl around and then you just get out of it. It's just, you just do it. I don't know. I think I'm thinking too much. Or I, I'm missing a trick to it or something. I could just be missing a whole pile of practice, too. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna fill the rest of this space with some swirls. But I'm, I'm really having fun with these little bouncy bloops. I feel like my stitching is getting better, too, on, on this one. Like I'm... my stitch lengths are, are better. More consistent looking. Don't want to jinx myself. Oh god, I still I caught myself again not breathing. <laughs> Alright, so that's it again. Let's add our second echo. I think we do need that second echo yet. Oh, interesting. So, uh, Catherine's saying, before I started quilting on my own, the long arm quilter, I went to use a clear acrylic glass and marker to plan out the quilt. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, what Catherine's is saying is like the idea of, I could have a, like a piece of glass or something that I'd lay out on top of the quilt here first. And then like with a, just like a dry erase marker or something, just kind of plan it out. Like, Ooh, it'd be fun to have lines here or let's, let's do the bloops. And then you can just get a sense of like, oh, okay, I need it more dense over here, or I need it looser over here. Let's let's adjust, let's erase and redo it. I wonder if they transfer it to their actual design somehow, or do they just kind of, if that's just sort of for planning, and then they just reference it. I don't know. fun. I, I like all these echoes. This is, I think this is a legitimate way to be, uh, to do a quilting thing. I think it'll be clear when we're done, uh, how much these echoes kind of call out what you want to call out, though. I think we could have actually gone further away, and it would have called it out even more, but I think this is going to be fine. These quarter-inch deals. I mean, this is kind of densely quilted. Maybe we try and be really, like, big and loose with our swirls. That'd be a challenge, because I, I feel like I tend to be, get stuck in these, or, like, do these small little shapes. All right. Uh-oh, and I uh, thought it started to sound funny. I think that is it for our bobbin right there. So <laughs> let's take that out. I do have a bobbin with a little bit of thread on. So this isn't a ton. I would obviously prefer a full bobbin, but I want to use this up and I feel like this quilting will be a way for me to use it, um, use it up. So let's just, I bet you we'll use it up tonight yet. And that's good. Then I can start fresh. I'll just wind a whole pile of bobbins and we'll be ready for tomorrow. Feels good using stuff up though. I, I like just doing that. Otherwise, you know, I don't want to wind more thread on it till it's used up. Okay, let's go. We only have that little bit left to do. All right, let's bring the thread up first. Probably wouldn't have 
have had to bring the thread up. We're going to be done with it in two seconds anyway, but already doing it. Okay, let's finish this up. Ooh, that got sucked up in here a lot. Hopefully we're fine for a couple little stitches here. All right, so that's, that's all we needed to do was that before we ran out of bobbin. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look again, snip away our little bits, and uh, we'll outline this horse a bunch of times. Then we'll add our squiggles, all of the squiggles. Get all these right away. All right, let's do the same on the back. I'm, ooh, I'm connected to something still. Oh, I guess I didn't cut the bobbin thread. That's weird. All right. Ugh, I think it looks pretty. Oh, <laughs> it's just a bunch of kind of bloops. It actually kind of looks like some large intestines there, but oh well, that's fine. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I, I think it's actually pretty cute. Ooh, got some fuzzles stuck in here. Let's get those so they don't cause me trouble. All right. Oh, and then this is where it kind of all snagged when I started stitching. That's that's not good. Let's get rid of that. Whole mess here. There, that's good enough. All right, and uh, our heart, <laughs> a little flat there, but all right. Um, let's do the horse. That's over here. This will be interesting trying to trace around. Again, this has a lot of um, a lot of seam allowances. This might actually be quite difficult to quilt through. And this has a lot of bulk, so I'm going to try and trace it. Uh, it'll be kind of like how we did the strawberry up here where there was a lot to, to go through. Um, so... That might be difficult. Oh, crosshatch on the horse. That would be kind of fun. Kind of crosshatch up. Ugh, you know what? I'm still worried about how dense this is. I might just have to do the swirls just to fill in the space quickly. Um, I'm going to get rid of all of the pins, I think. I think we have enough holding everything here that pins are just going to get in the way. All right, I'm nervous about this horse. Let's do it though. We're gonna trace and then we're gonna do the double echo. I think that's all we're gonna do. And then I will attempt to start adding swirls here. I'm pretty positive we'll have to add a strip of white um, to the bottom and the side just cause the block did just get so small from, um, from just sewing it. All right, let's do it. Horsey, it is your turn. Okay, let's give it a go. So I'm gonna start right down here. Oh, I hope I don't break my needle or something. All right, let's get my thread up from the bottom for sure. Okay, pull it up. Oop, not quite far enough, there we go. Let's do it. Actually, I need to get a little higher up. I can't quite see. All right, let's give that a try. All right, we are started. That's true. We could trace the mountains and stuff a little bit. Spikes on the mountain, sunset over the mountains. Oh, I kind of like all that. Let's do let's do some of that. 
So we'll 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 draw in <laughs> the landscape, uh, and then we can swirl the rest of the way. Let's do that. Okay, I like it. Okay, horsey, you're kind of hard to see. Ooh, boy. So this is me trying to get an outline. <laughs> it's a little, a little bloopy, but I think we'll be fine. All right, this I'm a little nervous about getting above this hair. All right, but I don't want to sew down the hair. We made it. Ooh, it's good we practiced on the heart and these other ones. All right, we made it around. Yay! All right, so I'm going to just go down a little bit further. Oh, let's snip these guys. All right, step one done. <laughs> All right, let's go around. I still want to trace this guy. Do we want to trace it or do we want to just start drawing in the background? We might just want to start sewing in the background, but we did trace everything else. Hmm. I think... I think I'm going to just start tracing the background. So I'm going to go up this path as if it's a path. It's not going to be exactly like this. And I think I'm going to just run it until we're into this bloopy shape. I kind of want to make it grassy. We could just kind of go up and down and up and down to fill it in. That, that would be a way to make it kind of grassy without um, having to totally make it grassy. Okay, but I do want to outline the other side. Let's do that. Let's outline the other side first. And then I think I got an idea. We're going to just go grass shapes up and down, but it's not really going to be grass shape shapes. It's going to be more of like a squiggle. All right, I'm ready. Let's do it. And then, uh, so it'll be really dense here and really dense here where this yellow is. And then this will be airy because I'm not doing anything else with this. And then the mountains will be airy. And then I'll draw like a little sun. So here I'm just going to do like an S curve. I think we're just going to go like this. And this is just going to represent a grassy little walkway path. I think this is going to be just fine. Let's get up to those mountains. So I think the mountains I'm just going to leave as is. We'll, we'll do the shape of the mountains and, and call it that. And ooh, we can add a peak to this mountain, like what you said. All right, so I'm not using, I'm not using a ruler for this, which I could. All right, we're just going to kind of bring it down. This is going to be a little valley. I'm kind of following the lines, but I'm deciding I don't have to be perfect with it. All right, let's 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 have this go up to a little mountain. And then another little valley here. All right, that was kind of fun. And I think let's do, we still have the path down here, and we have this little foreground stuff happening. I think we should do do that as well. Let's add the layers in. Okay, so I think I'll go here. We'll get this path. Then it kind of comes back. Ooh, I don't want to be by the horse again. Maybe I just go down to here, get this little path down here, and then we'll squiggle in there, and then we'll have to get back up to the rest of this somehow. 
I wanted to do that sunshine yet, too. All right. We'll just have to work our way around. I'm just going to travel off the grid here. I could work from the bottom and back up. Let's do that. All right. Let's see if I can get on this shape. All right. Here's our grassy walk walkway again. Let's fill it with the grass. Our little squiggle. Okay. And now I'm going to just sew up the edge here. Let's do this little path that exists. I think we're going to just go there and come back. Oh, let's try and get to the horse. There we go. And now here's kind of like a mountainy, plateauy thing too. I'm gonna make it more bloopy. And I think we're just gonna go like that. And we have one little bloop going up there, so let's let's just go down here. I'm not gonna follow the path of the horse. I think we'll just go right here. All right, I'm calling it good. Let's do a jump again. It's odd to do a jump, but I want to add like the little sunshine and we can add like little rays coming out of it. Or maybe not. I don't think this sunshine would have rays. It would just have like an arc. And then we'll be in a good position to do this to start our squiggles. All right, let's do a sunshine just right in the canyon here. There we go. Let's outline it once too. All right. I think we can start our squiggles now. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. All right. I'm going to just kind of squiggle up, squirrel around and work my way out of it. Let's see. Let's see how well I do with that. I have a hard time getting out of it. All right, there's one. I'm doing a couple little bloops around here and now let's start another one. See, I think I trapped myself a little bit there. Unless I go... Well, I'm stuck on the inside anyway. It'd be nice to get back down here, but I think I've trapped myself. You love the squiggles, uh, Cora? Yeah, I, I um, definitely need work on these. Getting in and out, getting in and out. Um, well, I do have to hit all of this over here, but maybe I can try and get over here first. Let's, let's see if I can do a little squiggle here. So you can echo squiggles too, and that's a good way to get in and out of places. All right. Oh look, I'm totally making it back over to where I need to be. Ha ha, that's great. And let's do a squiggle there. Oh, but see here, I'm gonna trap myself. We'll we'll do like a weird bloopy D shape to get ourselves out of here. All right. 
and again, I'm totally trapping myself, but I, I do want to add a squiggle here. All right, we're just going to go around the shape again. How about that? All right, and we're doing it. <laughs> okay. Coming off of here. Barbara okay <laughs> all right let's let's see if I can get down here and get myself out of there Ooh, I'm getting already a little tied up in this area My god, I'm so quilting with my tongue sticking out of my mouth again. It's just so silly. Okay. back up here oh then I need to travel over there oh dude we're almost done here I don't think I need to get this little edge here I think there's enough there so let's just get one little swirl here and figure out how to get out of it all right we're back up to the top so I can kind of just trace ugh, trace what I've done here and that'll get me over to the other side of this um, other side obviously a lot of this will be cut off but it's it's letting me travel so now we're back to the um, we're back to this final edge that I need to get some swirls going let's try and fill up this whole space with one swirl that'd be cool Wow, that one's a little crazy. Right on the edge here. Ooh, wow. I am jittery on this side. All right, whew, let's do the rest of this here. Thanks for sticking with me, you guys. I know we've gone a little over here again tonight. But we're finishing it, which is awesome, which means we'll be able to work on the last quilt block tomorrow night. I don't know why I had that little S there. do have to get more bobbin I think why don't we end it here which is crazy we just have the teeniest bit to do <sighs> and I will wind some bobbins and we will finish it up tomorrow oh how silly to be almost done here but 
we did use up both of those bobbins, so that made me happy. Uh, then we can fill up a whole pile of fresh bobbins. Oh, for crazy. So here's we were. We just needed to do, like, one little, like, there and back. Uh, <laughs> but I think we'll just leave it as is. Okay, I'm super excited. Let's, let's, let's look at it. I think those swirls... They feel, they feel, they feel like skyish for this, and they feel just like ice cream swirly too, I think. So let's just peek at the back. Sometimes you can see the quilting a little bit better. Whew, I, I, that, that's good for me to practice. I mean, this area here, I think this is probably the best area. This is where I started. I mean, look at, look at this over here. That's looking pretty crazy. Although that's where we still have to fill it in. This is kind of pretty up here. I, I like this flow. Uh. But yeah, working on it. Oh, and you can see the horsey there. There's our little our little pony with his grass grass there. Okay, I'm down with it. That was good practice for me for sure. And I do still really like uh, this crisscrossing of the ice cream. All right, you guys, let's call it there for the night here. All right, so hello again. Ooh, let's get that. Ah, sorry, you guys. We're coming detached. All right, we're just going to be crooked here. But there is uh, the last of it. Oh, here you can see the quilting a little bit better in the, in, uh, the light here. But that's fun. I think these swirls totally go with, with the idea of the ice cream cone. I like it. That was good practice for sure. That is something, a technique I need to work on. Maybe we'll work on it a little bit more to, tomorrow. Uh, so this is tomorrow's. Uh, we could, we could just try an all over, uh, pattern as well. Like just forget about all the motifs and just do an all overall. I don't know. It's kind of fun playing with the motifs though. So we'll probably continue that. So awesome. Thank you again, guys. I appreciate you joining me here tonight. Oh, let's get this a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to let you know, I will be at the warehouse tomorrow. So I will be shipping things tomorrow. So if you did want to get our bundle for, it says your suite, I know it's uh, reversed here, but uh, we are doing some silk shading, like look at all that blending of the colors, like that pink to the red, all of these different colors in the peach. I will be uh, working on this next week. So there's bundles available still and I'll ship them out tomorrow. Uh, so you'll be able to get it sometime during the week next week, but I'm gonna do a demo on how to do that silk shading. And I promise you, even if you're a beginner, you'll be able to do it. Uh, it'll be a fun little exercise, something that might've been a little scary to try on your own. Uh, we are gonna, stitch uh, the peach. That'll be like our little demo. I think that might take a little while. Uh, we'll do some more, maybe the strawberry too, if we have uh, uh, more time during the week, but I'm stoked. Uh, the pattern and the bundle also come with an easier design. So this one is just with some chain stitches around. So you can do the same design in two different ways, uh, which is just kind of fun. You can really do that with any embroidery design. So, uh, feel free to veer from any design you ever have, fill it in, do different outlines, try different stitches. It's fun to see what you can do with the same design. So again, I'll be at the office tomorrow. Uh, there's a link below uh, if you would like to grab one yet. Uh, so it's sent and you'll probably get it sometime next week while we're working on it. Uh, and of course the videos will still be up so you can work on it when we're done um, doing it. So uh, let me know. <laughs> and it's just available this month as well, which is zipping by again. Uh, <laughs> it'll be September soon. All right, you guys, thanks again. I appreciate you coming here uh, every night here, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening. Good night.